Hello everybody. Uh, today I want to do a lab for implementing advanced network services. So I built a scenario in which uh, my corp corporation has gone uh, rapidly and uh, uh, my company has several new branch offices and it has significantly increased the numbers of users in the organization. Additionally, uh, my organization also expanded the number of partner organization and customer that are accessing our websites and applications. Because of this expansion, the complexity of the network of the um, uh, of the network infra infrastructure has increased, and the organization, my organization, now needs to be much more aware of network level security. As one of the senior network administrator myself. Um, what I want to achieve uh, is to implement advanced networking feature in Windows Server 2012 to manage the network uh, infrastructure. I want to implement new features in DHCP and DNS with the primary goal of providing high level of availability while increasing the security of these services. I also want to use IPAM uh, because uh, um, it's a new feature in Windows Server 2012. Uh, to easily or to, or to simplify and centralize the management of the IP address usage and configuration uh, in a uh, complex network. So let's uh, start uh, with our uh, first exercise uh, which is configuring advanced DHCP settings. Uh, so let's uh, start uh, with the first task to configure a super scope. So for that let's, uh, let's open the DHCP console so this is our DSCP uh, console so what I want to do is to create a super scope but before that I will create one more scope into my uh, DSCP server so in this scope uh, I will give this scope 1 the name and click next the start IP is 192.168.0.50 and the end IP is 192.168.0.100 with the 24 bit subnet mask I will go next I'm not uh, want to exclude anything I do not I want to accept the least time of eight days I want to uh, configure uh, the advanced options the first one is router gateway so the gateway is 192.168.0.1 and I'm gonna add it the DNS uh, server the parent domain is addatum.com the server is already there so I do not want to change anything to this Win uh, server scope I do not want to have any win server in my uh, organization and then in the last yes I want to activate this scope I will say no uh, because I will do it in the next step then I will do next and finish so right now you can see the red symbol Th this says that this scope is not uh, um, active so if I expand it you can see all the features are there so my address pool is there uh, I don't have any reservations but in the server option I have my router DNS servers and DNS domain name so if I right click this scope uh, and I go to create let's say let's create one more scope so that we can merge these two together let's name this one scope 2 and let's go so let's start the IP 168 1.50 to 192 168 1.100 24-bit mask and no exclusion S same I want to configure the default gateway in this one is 192.168.1.1 I will add that 
I will leave everything as it is and I will say no I will activate it later and that's it so we now have two uh, scopes which are not activated at the moment so let's if I right click my IPv4 option again so there is a new super scope now so if I click new super scope I say next um, I can say uh, the name is Adatum Super and then click next so now it's asking me which scope you want to add so I want to add a scope 1 and a scope 2 so I press control to select both of them select next so both of them are selected if I finish now I have a super scope uh, which consists of both the scopes uh, in the uh, DSCP server range so that's uh, how you're gonna create a super scope uh, um, the main thing of the super scope is that super scopes are not uh, used these days very often uh, because of the uh, uh, VLANs uh, now what we want to do is to have uh, uh, divide uh, different VLANs groups into different VLANs and have a separate network to that but if in a, if you ha are in a case uh, where you have a same LAN and you have multiple uh, IP address ranges so that's where you use super scopes uh, but always remember that uh, your servers uh, should be aware of uh, this feature and your routers are also so let's move to the next task in the DSCP uh, which is uh, I want to do the name protection so if I um, uh, if I expand it and if I do the properties of this one there's a DNS tab and the name protection uh, pane is right there you can see name protection so if I press configure so there's an enable name protection so if I check this box up and click OK and click OK so now uh, the uh, DSCP name protection option is uh, enabled so that's very simple um, I would always uh, recommend that go through the theory uh, before you see any kind of labs or anything um, what goes behind a DHCP uh, name protection you should read about it we will move to the uh, DHCP failover uh, option now so to do the DHCP failover uh, option I would need uh, one more server so let's uh, go to server 1 I have server 1 uh, which is uh, where I have DHCP installed so let's open the DHCP manager here as you can see and uh, let 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 it open that there are no scopes in this one uh, plus this is uh, this is also the authorized server but it, it has no um, no uh, scope in it so everything is set it up here what we need to do is to build one one of the scope so on London DC one so now you can see that I have a DSCP server here so what you need to do before you do a failover you need to have a server with the DSCP role installed uh, and the server authorized so back to our uh, domain controller uh, where uh, my, my main DHCP server is running uh, what I want to do is I want to right click and I want to configure the failover option so in the failover option uh, it's asking me what you uh, want so it's asking me to specify the uh, uh, DHCP failover enables high availability DHCP services and all those features let's go next now it's asking me about the partner server so my partner server uh, it, if you if you go to this one and if you do IP config here it's slow I type twice
so as you can see I did IP config here so this uh, if I'm not wrong this is uh, 172.16.0.21 we will come back and confirm while we do the uh, partner we can add a server by looking at this one uh, you can see we don't have it here but if we browse now oh, we have it here uh, but we have a wrong uh, IP here let's see if we can browse it mm, nope I have to type London there you go so I have it here but I do not want to do it by the name but I want to do it by the IP and for some reason okay here we go it is 172.16.0.21 so let's minimize this here let's go and type 172.16.0.21 now it's asking me to create a new failover relationship with partner this so partner um, maximum client lead time so now I have two servers so I want one of them to lead so let's say I want 0 hours and 15 minutes uh, I want to have a mode of load balance I want to have 50 percent of the percentage um, I want to state a, a switch over interval and I want to do 60 minutes on this one I want to enable message authentication and I want to put a shared secret password here uh, so let me pass uh, let me put the password here so I put the password here and then I will put next so now I'm done with this settings so it says successful that's good that's always good to see successful so now it is successful uh, here um, so now let's go to server one let's go to server one uh, right now there's there's nothing much here so what I want to do is I want to uh, I have anything here I do not want to it should be refreshed It's still, it's still not here. It should, it should come by automatically. There you go. So as soon as I press refresh, it came. Everything came up here. So if I go to the client now, uh, this is our client. Uh, so let's log in to this one. So I am inside the client now. I want to open the control panel I want to open the network and sharing center I want to open change adopter settings so here I have the adopter if I go to the properties of it and if I go to IPv4 properties, uh, but I right now it says static, so I will do it opt in IP address automatically on both sides. I will say OK, say close. Then I will close and if I go here uh, in the search I can type uh, command prompt and open a command prompt here and in this command prompt I can ask for the IP config so you can see that now I'm getting an uh, IP address 172.16.051 but if I do sorry if I do uh, IP config slash all you will see more information let me
So here we can see that our default gateway is 0 0.1 and our DHCP server is 0 0.10. So right now we are getting from uh, London DC1. So if I go to my server and in the services pan, so if I open my tools and my services, because DSCP is itself is a service, and if I go to standard, if I maximize it, I should see DHCP. DHCP server you can see here and if I stop this service so now I'm stopping the DHCP services on the um, on my main domain controller and if I go back to my client and if I do uh, IP config release first to release everything and then if I do IP config renew to get the new IP addresses so I got the IP address so let's see if I do IP config slash all in this one you can see that now my uh, DHCP server is 0 0.21 so you can see that it's load balancing even one of the servers is down uh, my clients are getting the IP address so let's re-enable the service. Let's start it again. So this is how you're going to do the uh, failover, uh, DACP failover. So let's, let's uh, I, I think that's the end of uh, this video. Uh, this video is re regarding DACP. In my next video, you will see uh, me uh, doing the configuration of the DNS. Uh, thank you very much for watching.